What's up guys, welcome to a new video where I analyzed messages from our Discord where are 9000 people and I took the most common questions that people have and I put them into this video. I'm still a little bit sick but I decided to do the video anyways, so let's get started. So the most common question, how do I get started, what do I download first, what do I do first? I highly recommend that you watch my full guide video, which covers exactly that. And then after you watch the video, you try to generate few pictures, you try to set up Comfy UI, you try to set up RunPod, Vast AI doesn't really matter. You try to find some Comfy UI workflow, or you can download the workflow from our Discord, and you just try to download it and set it up. After you have done those four steps, you are ahead of 90% of the people. Question number two, do I need Comfy UI or can I use something else? Well, it depends. You can use things like Seadream or Nano Banana Pro, which are getting pretty good results today. But you have to be aware of that more and more people are aware of AI influencers. So you have to get better and better quality. So if you want to get the best possible results, you definitely need Comfy UI. But if you want to get 80-90% of the results for minimal effort, I would use just Seadream and Nano Banana Pro. Question number three, which models should I use? Flux, SDXL, 1.2.2, when? Well, it depends, but generally, if you want to get the best possible results, you want to use one or Gwen. Question number four, can I run this on my computer? What GPU do I need? Here you have to realize that the older models were less computational heavy and the newer models and video models are more computational heavy. So generally speaking, if you have more than 24 gigabytes of VRAM on your graphics card, you can run pretty much everything locally. But if you don't, don't worry, you can just use a cloud service where you can rent a GPU for a few cents an hour. Where do I download models and where do I put them? Here, let me actually show you. So if we go somewhere and you want to download a model, so you type one 2.2 image to video model Hugging Face. Hugging Face is the website which hosts all of these models or most of them. And here you can find the files and versions and here you can, I don't know, download what do you need, right? And the second question is, where do I put them? Well, if you have a Comfy UI installed, as I have on RunPod, you just open your Comfy UI folder, you open Models folder, and in the Models folder, you see that there are many subfolders. And based on that name, you put the model into the specific folder. So if you download a base model, you put it into Diffusion models. If you download a LoRa, you put it in LoRa's. If you download a VAE, you put it into VAE and stuff like that. After you do that, you restart Comfy UI and you can use them. Question number six, what is a LoRa and do I need one? To answer that question, we have to go to my previous video somewhere around here. And you have to understand that if you have an image model, the image model has 10 million images that it is trained on. And it has a lot of images of a blonde girl. But if you want, the model to understand your girl that you are going to train it on, you have to put the specific images and you have to put specific keyword to get the consistent face and consistent images. And if you want to get the best possible results, well, then you need to train a LoRa model, of course. But if you are okay with such results, which are like not the worst, you do not need a LoRa model. Question number seven, how do I load a workflow from JSON? And I will show you once again. So we have Comfy UI loaded, and this is the basic workflow in Comfy UI. And let's say you have downloaded a JSON file. The only thing that you need to do is you drag and drop it into Comfy UI. It loads, and then you have a new loaded workflow. There is one more thing that you should know, and that is that all of the images generated from Comfy UI contain the workflow as well. So what I can do is drag and drop one of my images that I have generated and it loaded the workflow. Question number eight, can I use RunPod, Vost AI, Google Colab instead, instead of running it locally? Yes, that's what I said in the previous questions. Question number nine, what is the difference between high noise and low noise model? 
Well, it only matters if we are talking about one 2.2 model. And I will actually show you what it means. In normal image models, you have these steps. And every step denoises the image, so you get the final image. But one 2.2 has a high noise model and low noise model. And I will show you in Comfy Y what does it mean. So if we load some one 2.2 workflow, you can see that the workflow is loading and you can see that we have two samplers here. Sampler is actually the thing that is doing the denoising stuff. And if we look closely, you can see that the first one starts at zero and ends at four and the second one starts at four and ends at 12. So the first sampler, the high noise sampler, it is connected to the high noise model, will actually do, let's say, only step number one and step number two and then it will do the details. So the low noise model connected to the low noise sampler will do the details. So the important thing from all of this, you do not have to remember any of this or how, do it, how does it work. The only important thing is that if you train a LoRa model for 1.2.2, you only need to train a low noise model because the high noise model, as you will see, only does the first few denoises, so it doesn't have any specifics of your character, but the second one will do the details and the details do have the specifics of your character. You see, first step, second, third and fourth step. So the only thing that the high noise model generated is this thing. And after the low noise model will get loaded and processed, it will do the details. So you can see that you do not need to train a character LoRa for this model. You only need to train a character LoRa for this low noise model, which will get generated in a while. But in that time, we will continue with our video. So how long does image generation take? Well, it depends on your GPU and on your model. If you have a powerful GPU and the old SDXL model, it can be like 10 seconds. If you are generating a video on a shit GPU, it can be half an hour, no problem. Can I mix Flux LoRa's with one model? You can never ever mix any model with, with a LoRa from different model, that's just not possible. It's the same if you would put diesel into a gasoline car, it just doesn't work. What's the difference between 1, 2.1 and 2.2? Well, 1 2.2 has the high noise and low noise architecture as I showed you in the previous steps and it has a better video quality. 1 2.1 is only one noise, only low noise we can say. But from my experience and other people's experiences, it is a bit better to train a character LoRa for 1 2.1. I don't know why some people say that 2.2 is better, but from my experience, 2.1 is better. Which one file do I download? Text to video, image to video, or whatever else. And the only thing that you need to download is to always check your workflow. So if we go back to our workflow, we can see that there is a load diffusion model. And it says 1.2.2 text to video high noise 14B blah 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 blah. So you always download what is in the workflow. You do not have to download anything else. And question number 14, what's better, GGUF or FP8 or FP16? GGUF is just a optimized model for shit GPUs. Bigger number is bigger quality, but you need a bigger VRAM and bigger waiting time. So you can say that the higher number will give you better results, but you need a better GPU and you will need to wait longer. Do I need the 5B or 14B model? Same shit, different story as the previous question. Can one do images or just videos? Well, it is a video model, but if you know, videos are just a lot of images in a sequence. So if you generate just one frame of a video, you get an image. And it is used for images too. And you can actually see that our workflow has generated an image, but the image is from a one model. Question number 17, is SDXL still good or should I upgrade? Well, it might be good for starters, you know, to play with the prompts and stuff like that, but it still has the old issues with the hands, with the fingers, with the, and with the details. So if you can use a better model, use the better model. The only thing I recommend to use it for is NSFW because it is such an old model that 
many and many people trained it on literal porn so you can generate not safe for work images. Question number 18, what is a VAE and do I need to change it? The only thing that you need to know, I don't want to go into details, is that it is a converter from computer language to real image. If we go back to our workflow, you see that somewhere around here is load VAE. The only thing it does, it takes the stuff from the computer that is generated and put it into a real image. So in real life, the only thing you need to do is to download a workflow, load it and download a proper VAE, which it says right here. Question number 19, what checkpoint model should I use with Instagirl LoRa? So what is Instagirl LoRa? It is a LoRa model to achieve that Instagram look. It is on our Discord in official links. It is our custom trained model. And you see that Instagram model, for example, if we, let's say we click on it, why not? You see that it is a 1, 2.2 model. So you cannot use anything else with Instagram, only 1, 2.2, or in theory, you can actually use 1, 2.1, but you cannot use it with any other model. Question number 20, how do I train a LoRa for consistent faces? Well, it is pretty simple, but advanced topic. To simplify it, you create a reference image, then you generate a data set of 20 images of this girl, and then you train the model. I will actually create a video for it. I talked about the basics in my previous video, so you can check it out. How many images do I need for my data set? Well, it also depends on the model. Generally, more is better. Here are the minimal requirements you need, but the most important thing you have to remember is that quality beats quantity. So if you can get 100 super high quality image of your character, that's perfect. But if you can get only 90 of those images and 10 images would be shit, just use the 90 images. If you can get 40 high quality images, it is always better to get 40 high quality images of your character that will be used for the LoRa training instead of getting 100 images, but some of them will be shit. Question number 22, where can I train a LoRa? Which platform? Well, fall.ai has the easiest one-click setup, but you get the least amount of control. Actually, let me show you. You see that we are on fall.ai, and if you type an image trainer here, it doesn't matter which one do we use, you can just drag and drop the images and start training, but you get the least amount of control over it. But it doesn't require like any skills, right? Then you have like AI toolkit, Musubi trainer that you can train on either a local GPU if you have a high quality GPU or you can use diffusion pipe with eval tool which will give you mathematically most precise results. Why do you ask? Well, the reason for it is this. This is a screenshot from my eval tool. By the way, this is a video that I will be creating on a training a LoRa model the best possible way. But if you use diffusion pipe with eval, you can actually see in which step did it converge and which step of the trained model you should use to get the best possible results. Why is it important? Well, let's say if you would use this step, it would be undertrained, so the model would not recognize your character as good as it could. And if you used this step, the model would be overtrained. So your character would be too sharp and it would not look realistic at all. Question number 23, what kind of photos should be in my dataset? Well, generally you want to use the photos that you will want to generate, but the golden rule is this 70% close-ups, 20% upper body, 10% full body. And as you can see, this is a full body picture. And this, this is like something between a close-up and a upper body picture. And this is the same. So question number 24, why does my LoRa overtrain or underfit? Well, that's what I answered here when I showed you the eval tool is because you are either using too many steps or too little steps. What settings should I use for my LoRa training? There are no universal settings. You can just copy someone's settings from the internet. You can tweak it. You can use your own. Here are my settings that I use. You can screenshot them. You can use them too. But I'm not saying those are the best settings. Those are the settings that work for me. Question number 26, how long does LoRa training take? Well, it depends on your GPU and on your learning rate. Learning rate is a parameter right here. You can see LR. 
but it generally can be something from 30 minutes to 30 hours, but usually it's around two hours. My LoRa doesn't work when I load it, why? You can either be using a wrong model, so you trained a Flux LoRa, but you are using one model, or you are not using the keyword that you trained the model on, or you just used wrong setting and did something wrong and did not train it correctly. How do I make consistent faces without training Elora? Well, you can either use some face swap on the internet, but that's not what I recommend. You can use image to video and take screenshot frames. This is like okay method, but the best method today is just to use image edit models. And I highly recommend you check out my latest video where I showed you Nano Banana Pro, which is the latest image edit model, which can give you very high quality results. Question number 29, can I use someone else's LoRa for my influencer? Well, you shouldn't if it's a public thing, but if it's a public LoRa, you can use it, but there is a risk of it getting used too much on Instagram. So if Instagram will see 200 profiles with the same face, there will be something suspicious, I think. Question number 30, I'm getting an out of memory error. What do I do? Well, you can either use worse models or you can get a better GPU. You can decrease the resolution of your images. Or if you are doing a video, you won't generate a 10 second video, but only a six second video, for example. Question number 31, generation takes 30 minutes. Is this normal? Well, it is not normal. Usually if you have a normal GPU and generating an images, the worst it can be is like five to 10 minutes. From my experience, if you don't have the worst GPU, but if you are generating a long video, it is definitely possible. I'm getting a black image output what is wrong usually it's something with the workflow you can be you can be using wrong vae you can be using wrong model you there is something usually that is wrongly set up in this scenario i would either try to ask ai or download a different workflow question number 33 missing notes when i load workflow so let me show you so i will use some flux workflow that i should not i think have load it yes perfect and you see some nodes are missing. So in this scenario, the only thing you do is go to manager, install custom missing nodes, it loads, and you see there is a install button. So you install it, you restart ConfUI, and you are done. This is what helps in 99% of the scenario. When it doesn't help, you have to install it manually. And I have a video on that, which is titled something Runpod Comfy UI and how to set it up. You can see it there. It's quite an advanced process. Question number 34, which custom nodes do I need to install? Well, never pre-install anything because it is not needed. But as I have shown you in the previous step, just log the workflow, see what custom nodes are missing and just install them. That's it. Nothing else. Question number 35, Comfy UI cannot find the model files that you have downloaded. Where are they? Well, as I've shown you here, you have to put them into ConfUI slash models and then you have to put them in the correct folder. If you have downloaded something and you don't know to which folder to put it, just ask AI. It's that simple. And after you put it here, you always have to go to ConfUI and you have to click restart. Otherwise, it will not be shown. Question number 36. My images look too perfect or fake. How to add imperfections? You must never use prompts like 8K, 4K, ultra realistic, hyper quality photo shoot and stuff like that because the models, because the image models are getting better and better. So you have to use stuff like amateur photo, cell phone quality, and you can also put it in Photoshop to do post-processing. You can add grain, you can add shadows, you can increase the brightness, whatever. And the last question was a duplicate. So yeah, this is it for today's video. As you can see, I have my LoRa training video scheduled. I just have to create it. So if you have liked this video, drop a like and subscribe. Also go to our Discord where there are tons of free resources that you can use. There are tons of workflows that you can use. And if you have any questions, try to write me a message. You see that there are a few people messaging me, but I didn't reply to them because I didn't have much time, but I will get to that. Try to ask me and hopefully in a few days I will reply. So I'm going to see you at the next one. Bye.